Blender 4.3 has a number of interesting rendering and shading enhancements that continue the work started in Blender 4.0 of making Cycles a more physically accurate renderer. In this tutorial, we'll dive into several other rendering and material additions in Blender 4.3 that continue this move towards greater physical accuracy. First, we'll look at a new diffuse roughness algorithm integrated into the principled BSDF. It's designed to simulate very rough surfaces in a more physically correct way. It more accurately models materials like brick, clay, concrete, dirt, rough fabrics, rocks, sand, and non-glossy woods. Then we'll explore the new metallic BSDF shading node, which includes a mode for utilizing highly accurate laboratory-measured reflectance data from metals. Both of these are material functions that deal with the accuracy of representing a surface. Prior to 4.0, the principled BSDF could both reflect too much and too little light, depending on a surface condition. One significant improvement to the principled BSDF's accuracy involved solving this too much too little problem. This is called energy conservation and preservation, and it's critical for physically accurate rendering. For instance, a significant change was made to the GGX glossy reflection function. A new multi-scatter GGX algorithm was both introduced and became the default because it better preserved light on very rough glossy surfaces. This change resulted in better energy preservation. Multi-scatter GGX simulates small-scale surface irregularities in such a way that ensures both incoming and outgoing light energy are accurately accounted for. In contrast, the standard GGX reflectance function does not achieve this level of accuracy. This brings us to the new, more physically accurate, but optional, diffuse function introduced in 4.3. It utilizes the Oren Nayer diffuse model, which can be accessed in the principled BSDF shader through a new diffuse roughness slider. This slider allows you to transition from the older diffuse function to the new Oren Nayer model. Although the model isn't explicitly named in the principle of BSDF, it enhances the realism of very rough diffuse reflections. When discussing diffuse properties, we refer to the base color channel, specifically when the shader is not in metallic mode. The diffuse algorithm in versions prior to 4.3 uses a simpler, general purpose, rough surface approximation called the Lambertian surface. This simpler algorithm simply casts rays randomly and equally in all directions, whereas Oren-Nayer scatters rays based on a more sophisticated microfacet mechanism. These tiny facets are like random small-scale imperfections in a surface. Oren-Nayer simulates light scattering between these small-scale surface microfacets. This ensures that both incoming and outgoing light energy are correctly reflected and preserved. This improvement is similar to how the new multi-scatter GGX function in 4.0 enhanced the older GGX implementation, improving energy preservation. So, the oren algorithm more accurately models very rough diffuse reflections like you would typically see on brick, clay, concrete, dirt, rough fabrics, rocks, sand, and non-glossy woods. Blender did have the Oren Nayer diffuse function available in versions prior to 4.3, it was within the diffuse BSDF node. However, it wasn't fully energy preserving. Similar to how the improved multi scatter GGX glossy reflection mechanism in 4.2 enhanced the original GGX by properly preserving energy, the Oren Nayer function in 4.3 has been upgraded with a multi bounce energy preserving property. You can see as I flip between the diffuse BSDF in 4.2 and 4.3, the slightly brighter version shows the properly preserved energy. This may be subtle, but it's a further step in the direction towards greater physical accuracy in cycles. By integrating the diffuse nodes or in Nayer functionality directly into the principled BSDF, the developers have made it more accessible and robust. Many users might not have been aware of the benefits of the diffuse BSDF, so this integration improves usability and easier access to this useful functionality. This integration creates better and simpler control over mixing other shader functions with Ornayer. For instance, 
The principled BSDF automates the mixing of glossy reflections, subsurface scattering, or sheen with it. This integration allows for proper energy conservation between these reflectance layers. So let's take a look at this material tester here to examine how this new diffuse behavior plays out on an object. Everything in this scene uses a diffuse-only material. When I say diffuse-only, I mean base color when not in metallic mode. This is the diffuse component of the principled BSDF. Now we have this new diffuse entry down here at the bottom that says zero, and that means it's the default Lambertian surface that I mentioned earlier, which is the behavior of Blender 4.2 and versions prior to 4.2. Let's examine the floor first with this checker pattern. The checker pattern is composed of these two materials, and we look down at this new diffuse entry. In the principled BSDF, we see roughness. So let's go ahead, let me set this to uh, turn the interactive renderer off. You can see the light distribution off into the surface from this back-facing light, from the light coming from the back of the camera. Now when we turn on the diffuse roughness, all the way up to 1.0, which transitions so that the Oranayer is fully engaged, we end up getting this. That's quite significant, isn't it? That is a more physically correct expression of a very rough diffuse surface. And this is something that you would want to use, say, on a concrete floor or on pavement outside, something like that. You're going to get a more physically correct expression of that diffuse surface. When we look at the uh, objects that I'm using for material testing right here, you get this sort of rounding effect as light is falling off on the edge. And that's not quite physically correct. There's technically a little bit of energy loss there. So let's go ahead and transition this to be a fully Oranayer diffuse surface. It's got this simple material with the base color and it has no specularity. It's just the diffuse base color. So let's come down and set the roughness up to one and look at the difference. Look how much more scattering there is coming back towards the camera, whereas the, the more rudimentary Lambertian surface has more of a feeling, let's transition back, of curvature across the surface. That may be something you want, and we'll look at some examples of that, where you may still want to use the old Lambertian surface versus Oranayer. So a good example of this is something that you see just about every day, and that's the moon. If you look at the moon on a clear night and the moon is full, the moon will have sort of a flat appearance. The sun is essentially casting the light from behind our viewing direction, and it's illuminating the full surface of the moon, even though the moon is sort of a sphere, and we get more of an appearance of flatness like that. And so that's what Oren Nayer allows us to do, along with the transition between zero and one, as you get a gradient between those two endpoints. If we take a look at this brick material, this is something you would expect to be very, very rough. And currently it's using the diffuse mechanism that was the only diffuse mechanism that we had in Blender 4.2 in the principled BSDF. Now, you can kind of see that you definitely get sort of a sense of curvature right here. A really, really rough diffuse surface would scatter light more back towards us when the light is essentially coming from the camera's position. So when we turn Oranayer on, then we get this new Oranayer diffuse model representing the surface. And this is a more physically accurate representation of that kind of a diffuse surface. Here's another example where we have denim. Denim wouldn't have any kind of specularity. It would be a very rough type of surface. But using the Lambertian diffuse approximation built into 4.2, this is what we get. It's sort of darker at the edges. But as soon as we come over and turn the new diffuse up to Oranayer, which is a value of 1, then we get that. And that is, again, a more physically correct representation given the lighting conditions for that type of rough surface. Here's an example of a dirt material that I grabbed from Polyhaven, which is such a fantastic repository of these types of materials. This is a dirt type of material, and this uses the old Lambertian surface diffuse approximation in 4.2. But as soon as we come over and we turn this into an Oranayer diffuse surface with a value of 1, this is what we get. It's a little bit more physically accurate. 
it doesn't fall off to the edges quite as much, which you could sort of technically think of as a little bit of energy loss. And that's one of the reasons why this is more physically accurate for these very rough, diffuse surfaces. So I mentioned that certain types of surfaces, you would necessarily want to use this new Oren Nayer. But other types of surfaces, such as this plastic material that we have on this fan, also use an underlying diffuse surface that then has a little bit of glossiness sitting on top of it. But it may not be as rough as, say, a concrete. And this is one of the reasons why we now have this, is we have more control over when to use Oranayer versus when to use Lambertian. And this is a good example of where the Lambertian may actually be better because it tends to preserve the curvature of certain objects. So for instance, this is Lambertian and this is what happens when I convert the diffuse over to Oranayer. It really sort of flattens that out when we have this backlighting. And I actually think from an artistic standpoint, I like the original Lambertian better for this particular application. In the next section, we'll explore the new metallic BSDF node. This node generates metals using the same internal mechanism as the principled BSDF, but it also introduces a new mode that utilizes laboratory-measured reflectance data. The principled BSDF features both a diffuse-centric and a metallic-centric mode. In metallic mode, there is no diffuse component. Instead, all the light is reflected off the surface in a metallic manner. So what defines this metallic way? Metals are characterized by a high degree of uniform reflectivity, regardless of the viewing angle. This means that the appearance of the metal remains consistent across its surface, no matter where you look at it from. Interestingly, this is similar to a purely diffuse surface. However, the key difference is that metals can exhibit a range of roughness, from perfectly mirror-like to very rough. In fact, a metal with a very high degree of roughness will behave similar to a diffuse surface. The second characteristic of metals is how they handle color. Unlike glossy reflections, metals have tinted reflections. However, there's an important nuance regarding both reflection tinting and the degree of reflectivity. For metals, the tinting desaturates and the degree of reflectivity usually reaches 100% high glancing angles. This is evident in metals like gold, copper, or anodized alloys, which have strong colors that allow for a visible transition at glancing angles. Blender 4.2 uses an algorithm in metallic mode called the F82 tint model. This model simulates metallic conditions in an artist-friendly way. The color of the metal is chosen by the user and set as the base color. When the metallic mode is set to 1.0, the reflectivity across the surface is set to 100%, and then multiplied by the density of the base color to determine the overall reflectivity degree and hue. The F82 tint model gets its name from a nuanced behavior observed in metals near the glancing angle. The degree of reflectivity actually drops slightly near the 82 degree incidence before rising to 100%. This subtle but important visual characteristic is emulated by the F82 tint model to reflect real-world behavior. This brings us to the new metallic BSDF. It has two modes, the F82 tint model, already used in the principled BSDF, and a new physical conductor mode. The physical conductor mode uses real-world laboratory measured values to define the reflectance properties of a metallic surface, including its tint and degree of reflectivity. These properties are determined by two values that make up a measurement called the complex index of refraction. The index of refraction is typically associated with refractive, transparent materials, but part of its function is to define how much light also reflects off of a surface. For metals, the index of refraction helps define surface reflections, though the values and definitions differ from those used for transparent materials. The second part of the complex index of refraction is called the extinction coefficient. It defines how light is absorbed and thus terminated by the metallic surface. The combination of these two components in the complex index of refraction defines how light interacts with the metallic surface and thus its appearance. These are laboratory-defined values. Additionally, the color of a metal is determined by different wavelengths of light, being either absorbed or reflected to varying degrees relative to other wavelengths. 
the wavelength of a gold material will have a different absorption and reflection pattern compared to a blue anodized metal. However, Cycles is an RGB renderer. When we examine the metallic BSDF in physical conductor mode, we see three entries each for the index of refraction and three for the extinction coefficient. These values correspond to laboratory measured data for each of the RGB channels. But how do we derive these specific values when complex IORs are actually a continuum across the visible spectrum? First, it's important to understand that RGB is an approximation of the full spectrum of color. Therefore, we need to identify specific wavelength values that correspond to each RGB channel. Reds, greens, and blues correspond to these general wavelength ranges. We could just use a wavelength value in the middle of these ranges for each channel, but that's kind of arbitrary and imprecise. So instead, we use three RGB points that are already defined. These are the three primaries of the sRGB color space that Cycles uses internally as its render color domain. Using these three defined points gives us a much more precise way of finding the correct wavelengths to base our laboratory measured complex IOR values on. Now we just need to find the wavelength equivalents for the primary points. I did some researching and found them to be defined as 615 nanometers for red, 550 for green, and 450 for blue. These are sort of standardized values for sRGB. Now that we've gotten that wavelength info, we head over to refractiveindex.info, a great website that contains a lot of laboratory-defined reflectance data. For instance, it has measured data from many common metals, such as gold, copper, aluminum, brass, iron, platinum, silver, and titanium. For our example, we'll use gold. We enter 615 as the wavelength to find specific complex IOR values for, and we get these IOR and extinction values. Then we do green with 550, and we get these values. Finally, we repeat for blue, and we get these values. Once we've put these into the appropriate physical conductor fields, Blender is able to render the material in a very physically correct way as it's calibrated to sRGB. Now, we may say, this is really tedious. And frankly, it is. But luckily, once we've defined a basic set of materials, you just save them as an asset or as a saved file and append them into a new file when you want to use them. You might wonder why you should use the physical conductor mode if the F82 tint model already provides a good approximation of metals and allows you to just choose the metal's color. In many cases, the F82 tint model will suffice. However, the physical conductor mode offers the option to use physically accurate values, providing a higher level of precision for projects that may require it.